like no music, just a beat. Mm-hmm. Like Big yeah. Z song. Yeah, yeah, no, Z yeah, no. I like that though. That's funny. Big Z song. <laughs> Big Z <D> song. <laughs> yeah. Big Z song. We encourage you to put it on everything. everything. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Big D's, big D's, sauce, big D's, big D's, sauce, big D's, big D's, sauce. Put it on everything you love. Yes. Here it is. You told me she loved me, but you told me she only wanted me for my big D sauce. Oh my God. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy. She told me that she wanted me, but she only crazy, loved me for crazy. my big D sauce. There it is. Yeah. That was it. Wait. Ride around my top down, window shaking a lot now. I'ma stay proud, no cane brown, but I thank God for these days now. Don't make sounds, crash glass, no rebound. End town, Nashville, and I stay proud now. Welcome to Nashville, where the conversations are always nasty. As always, I brought my main man, Demonte, with me. What's up, what's up? On, over in Colorado, <laughs> the one and only Care Bear. How's it going, Hi. Care Bear? It's going, it's going amazing. How are you guys? <laughs> Doing yeah. good. Where positivity matters. Always. <laughs> yes. Care Bear. Gotta and, keep it up. <laughs> and today we got a very, very special guest actually in the house with us. Yes, sir. The one and only Dave Pahanish. Mr. Dave. How's it going, Dave? How you doing, man? <laughs> I'm doing great. It's good. Heck yeah, man. It's a ble- it's a blessing to have you. This is this is awesome. We've had a lot of guests on this show so far, like big time actors and uh, musicians and um, what else? Regular people. Uh, a l- a little bit, a little bit of We've everything. We've a mix of everything. Uh, what kind of actors have you had on? Here? Um, so we had uh, Cedric the Entertainer was on the t- was on here. We've Brando. had uh, Brando Showtime Brando from um, what is it? Uh, P Valley. Yeah. Um, Sheldon Bailey, yeah. who's doing a film with Lawrence Fishburne and all that. Sort now you're gonna stuff. be walking it backwards because I don't want to omit anybody. That's I think that's all the actors though. <laughs> Was the actors? I think that's all. I mean, everybody else. I mean, if you count the, you know, our bloggers and everything. I mean, they, yeah. they're kind of a form of acting, but we've had a lot of bloggers, you know, so, on too. So the so. one thing we have not had on this show, and I guess the uh, most similar would be uh, Slim Gamble yeah. to. To, um, yeah. in in your line, Lady, Lady A. A, yeah, but we haven't had a big a big songwriter, man, right. and I think that's like the meat and potatoes behind <laughs> behind everything. I mean, oh, yeah. behind all these great hits that yeah. you hear, there's the guy that puts it together, right? Well, you put it. You cool. you were nice about it too, though. Not only is he putting it together, I mean, we're we're sitting here with somebody that's got multiple number one, you know, hits. A lot of people try to write and. Get, just even be recognized, but to get to that number one slot has to feel a little different out there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's it, it pays off. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> yeah, to get to that to get to that number one so spot it pays off. Oh, how yeah. many how many songs would you have to write to get that one number one? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't. It's a it's a lot of right place, right time. Yeah, and there the certainly thing. is a uh, there's a skill set and then a course a certain amount of uh, ability that comes along with it it's uh, to get there you know it's pretty crazy i did a lot of writing years and years before i moved to nashville and then kind of learned the nashville thing and then fused both worlds together you know coming so, from yeah so that, that make, i mean that makes a lot of sense too you know like if you take uh, you're writing here and then yeah. you come here and this scene is just completely different than what you know what you had been writing. So how how difficult did you find that though? Once you got here to start, you know you got a lot of experience writing, but then you got to learn the natural way of writing. Yeah, yeah. I, so I how, think how does that, that transition for me? The work? difficulty was before I got to town. Okay, it was uh, I spent years and years with what I you know just doing the artist thing, which you know resembled banging my head against the wall <laughs> every night. I mean, I right. I always felt like I was. A record deal was just around the corner, and I was always in and out of bands and traveling around. But it was it was hard, you know. It was never, you know, you know, if there was a full crowd one night, you're playing an empty coffee house the next. Right. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. But when I moved to Nashville, it was like, it was it seemed to be like the gates just opened up, and and it it seemed like where I was where I was meant to be. Like that's yeah. where my, uh, you know, I totally got it right away. It didn't take long to catch on. Right. The trial, that trial and error yeah. of, of, you know, 
it's the, it's the path, man. You know, we talk about it all the time, but it's that path of, you know, what, it's your journey. Yeah. Everybody's got one, you know, and sometimes, you know, there's people that's fortunate enough to hit that finish line, finish line sooner than others. You oh, know? yeah. But then, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you got to kind of look back on it and appreciate, you know, what it took you to get there because then once you make it, you know, now, you know, everything kind of clicks because of all those experiences, you know, oh, leading yeah, up yeah, to yeah, it. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. That so, like, good. what was the, um, so you started off as an artist first or whatever. Uh, yes, yeah. And do you say most songwriters do start no, as an no, artist I think, first? I think people that have a knowledge of uh, of Nashville and the you know, kind of the stories behind the song and, and what, what a professional staff songwriter is, there are people that actually know about that and they come here with the idea, like, that's mm. what I'm going to do. Gotcha. They, uh, they, you can even go to school for it. You, know, you can go to college wow. and get a degree in songwriting. And I was light years from that. You yeah. know, I, I, I grew up with... You know, I wanted to go down first before I before I rose. You know, so, yeah. You know, I I wanted to spend some time out on the streets. So I did some street playing out in Los Angeles and New York and Pittsburgh, and just I felt like that was the key to, uh, you know, fueling your creativity. At least it was for me. So right. Just experience, and then and in do, a way that is. Do you think certainly. so? Off of that, that's that's a good point. And I mean, I I honestly never thought about it like that. But do you think? you putting yourself in that position because for me you know you look at corporate america and you know the biggest complaints you get sometimes is is that well this is my boss they've never done my job before you know so for you you know if you take that same scenario that you've been that guy on the street that you've been that guy playing the small coffee house yeah. you know or playing that larger stage do you think it gave you a better understanding and appreciation for the craft oh without a doubt yeah, yeah without a doubt and it, it's without that i i don't believe that it would have ever been the same it's uh i think it was the years i spent right you know Grinding. not doing well <laughs> and and trying to just put the words into something real and uh, to really express myself emotionally through through songs that right. that gave me an edge when i came to town because then when i learning the skill set and the little tricks that the songwriting tricks and everything fusing those two worlds together is what right opened the doors that's what in my opinion makes a song so you had special you had the framework of the i mean like he he had the the poetry and the storytelling side of it down now yeah. it is somebody teach me how to put this thing in a pretty box exactly and present it yeah. to get it picked up to that makes sense so <laughs> so like someone so for instance someone like me who Cannot sing worth, <laughs> worth to save my life, and and I've gone and I've seen you perform and like some of your other songwriting buddies that have written hits as well, and the show is absolutely incredible because right. these guys have better voices, like pretty much better than the artists yeah, that, right. are, that are singing right. them, which is which is insane yeah. to me. Yeah. Um. So like, if I was a songwriter and I decided to write. Like, it would be hard for me to hold the melodies of, like, some of the stuff that you got you guys are writing. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, you're dead on on with that. Uh, it's it, And with myself, I came almost with, uh, not almost, but with the, a little chip on my shoulder because of that. Like, well, why aren't these, why aren't the people that are actually doing the writing and all this, why aren't they the successful ones <laughs> all the time? But the fact is, there's there is a certain... A huge art form when it comes to performing and right. being able to get up in front of a crowd every yep. night and do the same thing night after night. Right. I'm yeah. in the past, maybe not as much <laughs> anymore, but it, I just not built for that. You know, That's one night <laughs> I could get up in front of a, a, a huge crowd and 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 put on a show that is like no tomorrow. But then if something goes on, I'm in my head. I go out the next night. I'm not go even going on. You know. <laughs> right. You have to be able to separate. And I think I was and I think writing too. I mean, you can you can get in your box and stay in your box. You're behind the scenes, you know, still doing your job, whether you're in a good mood to do it that day or not. Versus if you're tasked with being on that stage that night, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to paint that. Put yeah, that, you gotta, you gotta go. put that mask on and you gotta go, you know, regardless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I, you know, I had to kind of slate in my brain to ask, you know, what, you know, what what that line in the sand is, is that, you know, I know I just wrote a beautiful song. So why not keep it, you know, for myself and go out there and put this, you know, sometimes you got to know that you put that on paper and it's just, it, it just hit. 
You yeah. know, so versus, you know, handing that one over, you know, to Toby Keith or to Keith Urban or somebody that, you know, everybody knows those names. Yeah. You're behind the scenes, you know, doing it. You know, and I get it. I told Dave in the car, I was like, no, I get it. I said, because if somebody wants to buy it, see you later, buddy. I'll start on the next song, you know, and let you go tear the stage up. But that makes a lot of sense yeah. that, you know, you just have your personalities and your people that you you may love doing that every now and then. But not just that every night constant grind of just having to show up and put that mask back on, no matter yeah. you know all hell could have broke uh, loose at the house there's, before. There's and, people that are made for that. Yeah, the Toby Keiths and Keith Urbans of the world they they love putting on a show. That's right. what they're meant to do. Yeah, and it comes to performing. I I would much rather like hide in the in the corner of some small bar, and, right. and be ignored and just play music that I like. Right you now. So we gotta we gotta get him shit. we gotta get Dave to the airport. I was just telling Dave on the <laughs> yeah. way here. I saw uh man, my timeline was going crazy last weekend because Keith just I don't know if he was in the airport on purpose or what, but he literally jumped up on the new BNA stage and started playing, you know, oh, so, really? so like everybody is literally sitting here recording Keith Urban <laughs> playing Brain live in the, in the in the BNA airport, you know, while they're waiting on their flights and everything. Free so. performance. That's what I said. We gotta get Dave, now we gotta get Dave to go out there with his with these hidden jewels that he got in his <laughs> pocket still and just jump on stage and oh, go drop it on day. people. So yeah. no, that's good, man. That's so really what, good. what was that spark for songwriting? Like, did you always love <laughs> um like, did you write poetry as a kid, or like, what kind of? <laughs> no, I was a uh, was more a guitar player when I when I first started, you know, just with aspirations to be nothing more than, you know, self destructive rock star, <laughs> yeah. and that's when I was ten, you know, and uh, you know, just went from there. I, I liked the Beatles, I liked Chuck Berry, and I liked, you know, got into classic rock, right. And, uh, and that that was my thing. I, just, I felt like I knew exactly what I wanted to do. But even though looking back now, I realize that wasn't what I wanted. It was just the idea of it. Yeah. But, uh, I'm at a place now where I'm not, you know, I'm far from any of that. I'm not even writing the way that I used to. I enjoy just kind of helping other people try to find their path. Right. And, uh, producing. But, uh, you know, songwriting, the way I used to songwrite is like a, a freaking weight. It's, <laughs> it's an all-consuming... Uh, I I wouldn't necessarily say it's an in, enjoyable life. It's uh, I mean when I'm really deep in a song, I I I I don't get there anymore. But what it takes, what it took for me to get there to to create the way that I feel is the uh, is what it took for me to be successful is not a good place. It's a, I ignore people. I you know not yeah. a good father. Right. You know, edgy. Right. Mad scientist. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then just yeah. It's just no good. You think because um, you're 100 percent in. He's locked in. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. horrible. And if you can't find it, you're up all night. So right. You can't, and you still might not find right the magic combination. And you live for the moments when you finally, the song comes out, and you have tears in your eyes, and you're, you're <laughs> thankful. And it has nothing to do with whether or not anybody records it or anything. So, what's, what's the fastest wow. you would say you've ever you've ever crafted a song from start to finish? I mean, it. You know. I'm I'm sure I've written songs that came out in just a few minutes. Right. So yeah. I know I have. Yeah. And uh, and those are the beautiful ones. It's just like, oh wow, it was right there. Yeah. All <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay, what was the shortest oh. amount of time? That is funny. Do you know? Like just a few minutes. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've written I've written songs that that have just fallen out like that, and then I've had others that that are <laughs> that have fallen out seemingly very quickly, and then the editing process, mm. the refining of mm -hmm. everything, is months. Right. You know? Yeah, that was typically, you know, you find something magical. It's like, oh, this is like a big fish on the line. You just got something, and then you Nashvilleize it, <laughs> uh, right? Which, which is a whole nother spin. Yeah, which is a mixture <laughs> of universalizing it and uh, you know depersonalizing it without losing the uh, the mojo. The flair. You know? yeah. yeah, it's uh, very so difficult. Do you think? And, and I think you know we we chat about it sometimes, and you know I think just across all genres. You listen to the music, you know, that I grew up listening to, you know, and I'm like, uh, I think we're kind of losing something here, man. Like, it's not, it <clears> doesn't have, you know, and I'm not taking any, you know, there's great artists out there, you know, young, up and coming, you know, you take the Taylor Swift, so the world has got the entire world, not just the nation. She has an like, entire world chasing her, you know, over her music. But I do think, you know, and maybe it's just me getting older, <laughs> you know, that, like, I listen now, and I'm like, man, we're losing kind of the art of this having content and this having, you know, something to it that's that's lasting. 
You know, yeah. like, and I don't think, you know, I, you know, I don't have grandkids yet, you know, but at the point that I'm passing on music, you know, to a grandkid, it's going to be what I grew up, you know, listening to. It won't, you know, I don't feel like we're at a point we're going to revert back to some of this right now stuff because I just think everybody wants to just jump straight to the top. Nobody wants to be that street, you know, go out on the street and let's see how this feels for somebody because I know I want to write one day, but we're losing it because everybody is beyond that point. You yeah. know, like we're all too big for that moment now because I think social media and everything has magnified everything more than, you know, what it is. So, you know, if you were giving advice to that one person, and we're, we're going to give them credit, that they're just like a young Dave was, wanted to get out there and grind it, see, touch it, feel it, smell it, see everything about it before I make it. What what advice or what what piece do you think you could have done maybe better back then to maybe escalate that process, if anything? I'm, I'm not sure. Whenever <laughs> I start doing the looking back thing, I, I realize that, that <laughs> it was all the, yeah. it was the whole road. You yeah. know, just the, the bigger picture I see, you know, yeah. you start to embrace the failure as well as the, right. the success. And I think that's the advice, you yeah. know, because yes. I, th I think that's exactly what is missing, mm -hmm. you know, right now is that we've set this stage for the kids now that they're, they're scared of that piece. They're scared. Yeah. Like social well, media told them, if you fail, we're going to magnify it over here. Everybody, and there, there's some truth to it, you know, because there is a lot more exposure yeah. on your failures, you know, because of how, you know, the world is set up now. Right. But, yeah, that's that's interesting that. Yeah, I, I have kind of dropped out of the whole game. This I'm not really uh, hip to the whole, the new generation of social media. And right, all that stuff. yeah. It's, uh, Smart man. I don't, uh, <laughs> I feel for the people that have to right. constantly carry around a, that weight, you know, filling themselves doing yeah. whatever every day. It's uh, yeah. I I don't I'm not in not into that. And, yeah, but I understand that's that's where it's gone. You know, I'm just not. It's not I'm you. not hip to right. it. Right, <laughs> and that's yeah, okay, I, man. You know, it's not crazy. Crazy. that I is perfectly take, okay. I don't know about it. It's uh, right. It's, yeah, it goes I'm, against everything. I I'm not you're big right. on social media myself. Like, no, it, you're like, not. My <laughs> my team makes me like post and yeah. but I I I can't. I can't stand it. I was like, <laughs> I'm not going to post a picture of freaking ZD yeah. or whatever that I'm eating tonight <laughs> for no for no reason. It, just, right yeah. it does yeah. not fit my character. Right. Like if I have like a song coming out, I'll be like, "Hey, new single out right. tomorrow or whatever." And that's pretty much the gist of your post. I mean, yeah. it really is. Like yeah, it's not, you know, you post the kids every now and then, but something not... going on or yeah. whatever. That's funny. What is it? Who's your favorite artist to write for? Or do you just write and then they <laughs> pick and choose? Or, you know, I, but who's your favorite? Uh, I, is, I, don't, uh, I don't follow country music. I never have. I, uh, <laughs> and I never wrote for anybody. I, uh, I was fortunate. I don't, I'm not saying that as a, as a joke or anything. I was just very fortunate mm. that I was in the right, right place in the right yeah. time. That some of the songs got into some people's hands that, uh, that had, you know, given me something to some type of livelihood but uh so really it never even started out as a, as a you country never wrote thing. it as a country now, song. Uh, because That's of my background of uh <laughs> you know i guess country rock like right. eagles jackson brown stuff like that i when i came to town i had something that was a little different mm. you know and because of that i i think that it made the, the songs kind of stand out and uh but i was also very uh driven by a uh, pop yeah Rock, like I call pop, like the Beatles, like right. the whole the yeah. way the song is structured, right. and uh, commercial music, I, and you know, fusing like heart and soul with that. And uh, is there is crazy. there an artist though that you would say that you kind of made your your standard as far as your approach of how you framed it up and how you started crafting that song? <clears throat> so if you're, I mean, take the Beatles for instance, because that's going to be way different than. Totally. You, you know, know what? When Def I, Leopard or anybody. When I was <laughs> like gonna... doing things uh, that became successful, I, I was channeling old classic rock. Okay. Like songs like Ario Speedwagon songs and stuff like <laughs> okay. that. Okay. And it's like, I was like, oh, you just, these those particular songs, like, uh, I think even um, like Time for Me to Fly, mm -hmm. Ario Speedwagon was recorded by Dolly Parton. Right. And when you hear a wow. version, you would think it was, oh, it sounds perfect <laughs> like yeah. that. And it's like, so that, that era of pop rock, you know, was the format for right. what was going on 15 years ago in country music. That's awesome. And uh, 
So I I was constantly like, uh, you know, trying to write cool mm-hmm. classic rock songs mm-hmm. that, uh, and then when we would demo them, we'd had a banjo and a steel guitar, <laughs> and a little twang, and right. the subject matter slightly different, but uh, but yeah, that was it. And I have nothing against you. You know who I really dig these days is someone like like Harry Styles to me. Yeah. I don't know if yes. you listen to his music. Yeah, yeah. Harry Styles yeah, yeah. Is, like yeah. he is that is music that I can latch on to that's also universal that right. I can see uh it has a timeless quality. So now we gotta get a song in Harry's hands that you wrote. That <laughs> yes. way we can uh this, we can just I, make I know this he's marriage part of happen. the writing process on that, but uh <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That would be crazy. That actually would be crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's it's he's really I like Harry's style. Isn't it insane? Like if you think about it, like in his stories. Uh, kind of similar to Slim's because mm-hmm. Slim moved out here, mm-hmm. did not like country at all. Right. Or like he only was hard rock yep. or whatever. Came out to Nashville and Nash and turned into a Nashvilleian <laughs> and turned into a country, uh, country guitar. Oh, I mean, that's where he landed. But I mean, honestly, it's weird because the path was kind of the you know, like he he said the same thing. I you know, I bypassed like, Nashville for yeah. years because I thought that I knew what was going on. I you know I spent time in Los Angeles, went there a few times, went to New York City, and and Pittsburgh, of course, where I was where I was born. But right. I mean, I was I kept thinking that was the scene, and then something I was playing in New York, and I met a publisher when I was doing a gig that was representing a songwriter in Nashville, his European catalog, <laughs> and she. She had an English accent. She said, I think your music could in quite well. <laughs> so I, I came down to Nashville just because everything else I'd tried. Right. You know, I didn't seem to be uh, making it happen. So I came down and, that's and then that is, I that's started crazy. putting it all together. I saw, I went to, the night that I decided to move down here, I went to 3rd and Lindsley. And, mm-hmm. and on the bill that evening, I don't know if you knew these people or not, but one was Al Anderson, Rivers Rutherford, Danny Flowers, uh, Daryl uh, Daryl Scott who's, and uh, Jeffrey Steele. Chuck Jeffrey Cannon. Steele. I, they, I yeah, oh yeah. All these guys were like hit songwriters, right. but yeah. soulful as can be. And yeah. just uh, like Danny Flowers wrote uh, Tulsa Time. And uh, I mean, they were just like names that have gone down in Nashville. Right. Legendary yeah. names. But uh, I was like, I was hearing them sing songs that they had written that were on currently on the radio. <laughs> that when I heard them on the radio, I can remember being back in Pennsylvania and like, I'll turn that off. I can't stand this song. And then I heard the writers yeah. play them. Yeah. And it was like, oh, it's like, I get it now. And once I got it, I set out and it took me about a year to get down here. Yeah. And I'm like, my, it was a whole new direction. It, was, it wasn't to, you know, actually, I wanted to come down. I was like, I think I could actually get a pub deal. And, and do that to, you know, have some money coming in right. while I work on right. my artistry. Yeah. So kind of do it on the side, but there was no doing it on the side. It was, it was about fusing it all together. You know? Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Crazy. Artistry. That's awesome. Yeah, because I'll, I'll be, like I said, and I'll, I'll say it to anyone. Like, when I went to see them live perform, it was, pro- it was probably one of the best shows I've seen out in Nashville for right. performers. And I've seen, I've seen a ton, I mean, probably over a hundred and something shows or whatever. But like you got like hearing it firsthand and then like hearing it from your, like how you guys play it yeah. and then listen, listening <laughs> to it on the radio. It's like, it's crazy. Right. I was like, wow. Like, that transition th- this, from like this guy wrote this song and performed this song before this other guy right. jumped on yep. and sang it. And yep. now it's everywhere. Right. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. I need that art. Yeah, <laughs> I need that art. All right, I'm gonna just start jotting down poems and see if we can put music to it and see what give happens. Give me two lines. <laughs> or tell right. stories. Give us, give us two lines right now, as if it was a love song. Just two lyric lines. I said, babe. Yeah. <laughs> no. I said, that would have been hilarious. I love you. We're gonna ask Dave to rewrite that, so you got something else to sing. That's an inside joke. That oh. like every single time he gets ready to sing, he sings this same line over and over again. Because he's sitting there, he's like, "Yep, nope, that's never gonna make it, buddy." And it's like that doesn't fit any framework. <laughs> Whether you went to college for it or you just walked the path, that doesn't fit. So, <laughs> that's so awesome. You brought the guitar here. Um, <laughs> Uh, if you don't mind, I mean, do you mind playing us like a song no. or whatever? I, we'd yeah, love, not we'd, at all. We'd love to hear, yeah, that'd be to awesome. hear something. Okay. Well, I'll do one. 
Nice. I do want to write. This is a. Uh, this is one that Keith Urban recorded, and uh, I guess what makes this song very special is. Uh, I hope we've all been in love. I'm sure we have, but that mm-hmm. moment, that infatuation, <laughs> the magic, the all-consuming, had come over me right when I also had a vehicle for all my songs. So, and uh, so I kind of fused it all together. I wrote this for my wife just after, just after we met, and just after, uh, after I, I was going to ask her to marry me. Or was it after I asked her? I can't remember. <laughs> But regardless of which, uh, I wrote it. So it came from the heart, and I applied the whole net. Blah, blah, blah. Let me just get on with it. It's funny explaining. <laughs> no, that is freaking That's awesome. deep. <laughs> That's awesome. I loved you since the very first day When I caught you looking my way Saw you and I knew it but Up until you came along No one ever heard my song That's climbing with a bullet It's nice to have someone Honestly devoted but when it's said and done Because I'm part of you It's tough to figure Just how we could be Miles from one another But still you and me Somehow found each other Traveling, singing It don't mean nothing without you Fast course first <laughs> yeah just drop the mic right there good job sir oh my awesome. god uh, he's easily the I, best singer I, that's I'm been almost on and you know speak- what i got him to compare to 
me. No, I'm just joking. Nah, nah. <laughs> he's, he's one of the best singers That's awesome, know. man. Period. Hey, that period. was a great job. Thank that was freaking great job. Like, and honestly, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I was hoping there was a song you were gonna do because I listened to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I was, I was listening to it last night. And I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe this is the one we oh. get if we give him just the open door to go and play he, whatever he wants. Like once you know the meaning behind yeah, that's it and awesome. oh, whatever. Yeah, that's like that's when sweet. you explained it. Like it's so, it's so freaking deep. And then like <laughs> knowing like you and your family and stuff. Like I could relate. I like, just appreciate uh, yeah, the fact yeah, yeah. that the little girl comes along and then all of a sudden <laughs> yeah, everybody yeah. loves you because of the kid. It's so oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is so it, true. In that particular it's case, so it was, it, that was about my niece uh, okay. being born. Okay, gotcha. And, uh, no difference. Which though. I was down in Belize <laughs> and yeah. uh, visiting because my wife's sister okay. was pregnant, was due to have, have the kid. And so we were in the middle of the jungle staying in this hut. And, <laughs> and I was halfway through the song. I was writing it down there. And, and then halfway through, I knew I was on something that felt really good, and I wanted to finish it up before we left so I could sing it. Yeah. Oh, as that's... A, yeah, it's a thank okay, you to their family. Yeah, and then that's awesome. her sister went into labor in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> it was a bonding experience. Right. So, wow. <laughs> but I guess Keith had paralleled his life. He had a he had a little girl right at that time. Right. And it uh, just... Hey. Just blind luck. Perfect timing, man. Yeah. Timing. Hey. Yeah. It's Holy all part of the journey. Bro. That's that awesome. That is incredible. Yeah, that was good. Karen, we'll, we'll what, see what you again you, next week. What Let's, do you think, Karen? <laughs> You heard some of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, that is. Yeah, it is. I started playing when I was uh, nine or ten years old. Interesting. Yeah, and uh, I play piano. I, guitar is my best instrument, but I've, you know, I play everything that comes along with, with it is a little bass guitar, a little banjo. And I picked up banjo and I first came to town because I was moving to Nashville. I yeah, he's like, let's, let's, let's diversify. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's fine. But now it's been 18 years, so I guess. Uh, you, know awesome. who the, you know who they say is the number one banjo player in the world? You'll never guess. Number Steve one Martin. banjo? Steve Martin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I never heard yeah. he was number one. I know that he's really good, but uh, I don't yeah. know how good him. He's That's won, a, now he's I won multiple Grammys for <laughs> playing the band. <laughs> I got to look it Steve up and see Martin. Steve Martin. No, I like, swear to God. Well, you know, I, I have a couple just, of albums, his comedy albums from the yeah, 70s. Right. And, and there's always part of his bit where Is he picks that, up his yeah, band. That's and interesting. He's like, yeah, amazing. My, one of my, uh, Johnny Truesdale. I didn't know that. One of my engineers from, uh, you've met Johnny before. Yeah. He has a Grammy with Steve Martin wow. for playing the band. Oh, wow. <laughs> which is insane. That is nuts. <laughs> That's wild, man. That's he, talent, man. Yeah, I love that's yeah. when you can. That's when you can reach in your bag and kind of pull out whatever you need. To. Is it different playing the <laughs> banjo than playing the guitar? Yes. Yeah, it is. But uh, there are similarities. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I play a five string. I guess you know nowadays you can get a a normal guitar banjo, a ganja. I guess that's that would be the same. But uh, but uh, it it is a little different. It takes a little getting used to. But I yeah. really like it. I like I like the uh, the earthiness of it. It's a uh, very hands-on mm -hmm. but that's what i also like about acoustic guitars uh, but it's even more so with banjo it's like any little you know you touch you, you could feel, you feel it feel yeah. And just, yeah. And all kinds of different sounds and i yeah. love it that's, that's crazy, awesome though. That so is awesome. what do you got um coming up for the people i know you're always involved and you're doing shows and stuff like that like what could we look out for for uh, you you got any shows that you that you're gonna be doing soon or nothing, trying to put together? Uh, nothing local, um, okay. Really, uh, well, my we friend stretch, Matt and I, yeah, Matt we're, Warren and we I, we stretch I pretty far. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, we're not just. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah we're tell them they may hear it and be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mo most of the shows I do aren't. Uh, they, it's not uh, like I go out to some club or something. I do a lot right. of corporate events. Okay. Theater shows where it's it's less about us is yeah. the songs and i just kind of do what i just did okay i tell stories behind the hit songs and then i i i fly with another guy named matt warren okay who's uh, has a bunch of hits and he's a very soulful singer and comes from the same cut from the same cloth like yeah. grew up on you know rock music and he's a big grateful dead fan okay i think he has music recorded by some of those jam bands out there and but he uh, he had some success in country music and and we play together and we do our show and that's about the most I do these days is right. that type of thing. So. 
That's good though. That's that a pretty good. Uh, that's Absolutely. a pretty good chill, <laughs> relax <laughs> spot to land in after all this success. So that's I, good. Told, yeah. I told Dave he has to write a hip hop song. <laughs> like we gotta go deep with them. Like if nothing them else, up. maybe put the guitar in and then just let yeah. let the guitar do the talking for <laughs> yeah. him. Like it's a... or perhaps um, <laughs> like uh, I don't know. Like I have some ideas and stuff, like real simple choruses that have space. You know, mm. like that tune that uh, Eminem did with somebody not so long ago. I can't remember, but it has like a, a cool melodic chorus, and then he raps, and mm. then there's another. Uh, then he's back at it. You know the song yeah. I'm talking about? It's a, um, really, uh, I'll think of it in a second. But I think he's talking a lot about his dad yeah. or something like that. His parents and. Uh, you know which one? Mm-mm. Just, not lose yourself it. or any of that. I don't like, think it's lose yourself. It's, something tells me that the voice is sped up when it comes to the chorus. Like it's a higher pitch. Oh, know? that's for for sure. Probably with him. There's no telling what. <laughs> and what he's, he's got doing so it. many hits yeah, it's, that it's, it's like ridiculous. Tough. It's tough to even. Like ridiculous. But you come moment. out with something like that for me, we'll make it happen. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I have stuff that has like uh, well. I'll have to just send it to you. I'm sure. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's something that you could do something with. Let's, That'd let's be awesome, do it. Actually. I would love that. We'll have him at least rewrite. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll have him rewrite our uh, intro for his episode. Yes, <laughs> correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let yeah, him throw in a little little magic on, uh, on when his episode drops on it. Mm-hmm. Be cool. I would tell you, that was the best performance. Like, like, it was so cool just being like a foot away. Yeah, it's good. And hearing it or whatever. Um, so like props to you, bro. I yeah, mean, freaking you're you're actually unbelievable. Yeah. Like a like a real artist before even uh writing. Right. And like that brings me to the point, like there a lot of the bi- best singers and artists, like Julia Michaels, for instance, like shout out to Julia. Ju- Julia like is a musician herself and puts out records, but she writes for Justin Bieber. So does Pooh Bear. Pooh Bear, like Pooh Bear has a better voice than Justin Bieber, but nobody even knows, <laughs> knows about, about it. it. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. And Julia Michaels does like Justin Bieber and like uh, Selena Gomez and a lot of these. People but now, Dave has me wondering song. now, like how many of those people like really just don't want to be on the stage? I mean, yeah. you know, like yeah, I'm sure. Like, I mean, you're dropping those kind of hits, and honestly, that's I just not a, your thing. It's I mean, a special breed yeah. That, that yeah. thrives in that. Uh, right. Because I can attend all your shows as a writer. I can listen to <laughs> and never have to sweat. Yeah, I, I did all my sweating leading up to that night before yeah. the song dropped. You <laughs> Correct. Know, so like it's a yeah. No, that's what makes it cool. I I love the behind the scenes. Yeah, I have a on tremendous it. respect for the 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 artistry behind showmanship and uh, and being a professional performer. Right. I mean, it's a it's a different animal. Yeah. A, mm-hmm. I was never able to get my hands on it. I always thought that's what I wanted, and there's something wrong with me because I couldn't. Yeah. Uh, thrive in that arena, but there wasn't. I was just in the wrong right. arena. It just right. wasn't meant yeah. to. Uh... You know, it's cr- you know, it's crazy to me. Like, like listening to, like how you were talking about, um, like getting into that feeling or whatever when mm. you're writing the mm-hmm. song. So, like, I write all of my own music mm-hmm. or whatever, and that, a lot of times that's why it's like upbeat and like dancey mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, it's really hard to get like into that character or like when you snap out of that character relatively quick like people don't people don't understand like like if you're happy and you're trying to write a sad song or whatever yeah it's just very it's hard yeah. or or vice versa if you're like super depressed and you're like uh-huh. like yeah I'm feeling happy yeah, like, it's not, it's yeah. Not, like it's, uh-huh. I think those, it's but very, I mean and he, I'm, I'm sure you can attest I mean you know some of the best songs ever have come out of moments just mm-hmm. like that, you know, like you that was a moment in life, you know. Mm-hmm. And for me, I think some of the songs that I appreciate the most that have in history of songs, you know, yeah, you got your songs that people just write that are club vibe and you know, like that's made for particular things. But the oh, songs yeah. that are written when somebody is in pain or hurt, or the songs that are written when somebody's happy and you know, great thing, I just think that it's a I think that same feeling that they that light that goes off of them in that moment is the exact same thing that you're pushing to the people at that point because it's something that you can feel, mm-hmm. you know. And that's where that kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier, you know, is that I I don't want us to ever lose that feeling, yeah. You know that people are just putting stuff on paper to just let's get this quick check and you know we're back out the door because music is too important, you know. And I I just think that it's just one of those 
it's one of those vehicles that take us through those moments. You know, so mm-hmm. like you had a Keith Urban or somebody that was in that. That was his, he saw his vehicle to take him right. You know, through that. So that's. I think it. I think I don't want to see that art lost, man. We got to make nah. sure we doing our part to keep it going. Mm-hmm. I don't know what my part is in that outside of saying it on a podcast. We're but. gonna get you ready. To <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, gonna try, we're gonna try. I think. I think we're gonna try. You're gonna go home as an experiment. I'm gonna go and we're going to get DeMonte to write a full song. <laughs> and then me and Dave will sit on this side and we'll judge, and your, judge, the song. And we'll judge your song that you wrote. Yeah, well, you better hope it does not require me playing a guitar like you just did. <laughs> it is over. Hey, I got an idea. I got a, I got a fun idea for Nashville. Why, why, don't, why don't the three of you right now? It's a challenge. This is a challenge for everybody. Okay. The three of you right now. With this wonderful songwriter in here, <laughs> come up with like a 20 second jingle about how Nashville is brought to you by Big D's Sauce. Yeah. We encourage you to put your sauce on everything. That's the question. <laughs> All right, fine. Can, uh, we do, can we make this happen? Yeah, let's do it right now. Does he do a tour? Does he play the guitar? And, I'll, and I we'll mean, do it, the jingle every over. Every good song needs some, needs some structure <laughs> and some chords. All right, I think this is a good way to wrap up the show today. Let's it, it, let's do it. It's a great way, and it's and also if the podcast blows up. I just made this man some money. So. <laughs> yeah, and, and, exactly. And, and honestly, I was just going the opposite direction with that, Tom, because if this part goes bad, we also can edit this out. So it's crazy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So we we got about five minutes left. So oh, let's man. see what you guys right. got before you close out, huh? All right, Dave, song. give us a give us a tune. Uh, give us a tune on the guitar. I am well, it's gonna be a collaborative madness. effort. We need we need we need all three of you guys figuring this boy, bad boy out. I think uh, it can't be anything serious. You know, no, be not with this dude. And uh, I mean, just with the words "Big D's sauce" in it, it's gotta have. <laughs> yeah. you're, gonna probably, you're probably gonna have to do a hard pause on the Big D sauce. <laughs> Big D sauce, the one and only. <laughs> Something like that. Pick some up so you're not food's not lonely. <laughs> <laughs> We're absolutely like, gonna get canceled like before we get guitar. started on this one. <laughs> no, we got this. Go ahead, Dave. Well, I song. had it. <laughs> I hear it in my head. I'm gonna pick With up. Tom's the sauce already over there writing something in his head. <laughs> pick up my sauce, and I think about it. <laughs> Gotta have a what is that? A, a sublime feel. I think is the only way to pull it off. Uh... <laughs> Karen, you're in on this. I'm in on this, yeah. You want to start us off? Yeah, that's here? What, see the <laughs> heart? That's what I'm saying. I like the beat. Yep. You got to give us the first line, Karen. I got it. Tom's ready. You're going sublime, right? So yeah. it's got to be very shouty, right? <clears throat> it's gonna be yeah. like, right? So it's got to be like, you know, you had daddy it right said, there. stay away from that girl. She only wants your big D's. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Like that. That baby, is, yeah. baby, that's the riff. And the... Of course, it's Big D sauce. Yeah. Big D sauce. Yeah. Big D sauce. Oh, you almost gotta go with like that. that almost like the hey little maybe thing. Let me light your candle. Exactly. It's almost gotta be like that. Yeah. Yeah. Or like uh, the Fleetwood Mac. You know, don't ask me what I think of you. Give the answer that you want me there to. There it is. Go fast. Yeah. But I mean, it's like no music, just a beat. Mm-hmm. Like big yeah. Just, songs. yeah, no, big yeah, no. Songs. I like that though. That's funny. Big these songs. <laughs> big these songs. Yeah. Big these songs. We encourage you to put it on everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Big these. Big these sauce. Big these. Big these sauce. Big these. Big these sauce. Put it on everything you love. Yes. Here it is. <laughs> she told me she loved me, but she told me she only wanted me for my big D sauce. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. She told me that she wanted me, but she only crazy, loved me for crazy. my big D sauce. Yeah, that was it. It's close, yeah. Crazy, crazy. That's funny, man. That's actually funny. You can tell I've written songs before. But she only loved me. 
that you want me. You can tell me that you want me, but you're only looking for my big D sauce. Yes! That's a big D sauce. I love that. Big D sauce. You tell me that you love me, but you only want my big D sauce. The love me and the want me sink up here. What did you say? You tell me that you. Well, tell me you, that you, you love me, but, but I know you but, only want me for my big D sauce. I expect this to be a short what he just came up with. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That was awesome. Classic. That was good. Yeah, and like you said, it, it's awesome. based on that, you know, the song that you brought up. That uh, <laughs> I like that. The yeah. old tune, the Black yeah. Crows. Uh, yeah, has that vibe. That's awesome. And there's somehow that leads into that hook. <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff. That was, that was incredible. fun. That's incredible. That's good. That was the best one. And then if you were doing it live, you'd be funny. You'd be like, she wanted for my big D sauce. <laughs> and the colored girls go, dude, 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 dude. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That's awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. That was awesome. That was probably the best yeah, thing good. ever. And I already know what verse three is. Well, that what is it? One it long yeah. beep. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Big T song. <laughs> <laughs> Too hot for TV. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Big T <D> song. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, that was good. That was good. That, that was, was a great was... moment right there, man. Right. I liked it. Nobody will match that one. I'm telling you, that was oh, awesome. Girl. You're talking about we're spontaneous all the time. That was spon That was spontaneous. That was spontaneous. <laughs> That was this great. was an epic podcast, yeah, that was guys. Good. Yes. That was good. Kara, any final words Sorry, for Dave? Really good. Oh, final, final. Um, just any words of wisdom for anyone up and coming as a songwriter? I know that the industry may have changed a little bit since you began. So what would you say for anyone out there that wants to get into the business? I mean, you, you nailed it. The industry has, has certainly changed. So it's... I mean, old schoolers, hard to, uh, you know, I, do, I like the, you know, I like the journey. I, I don't like yeah. the, uh, I was never one for college, you know. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to learn yeah. from the ground up. Yeah. But that's yeah. if you, if you want to put in 15, 20, hard time, you know. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, I don't know, it's just how I, how I've always, uh, it all depends on what route you want to take. Yeah, you can just you can move here and dive in and uh, and write a song about what you think other people want to hear, what other people are experiencing it, and and you can be successful at that. But I that's that's not the game or it's not the arena that I was ever interested in. I was always you know interested in writing from inside. You know, just kind yeah, of, which would mean uh, whatever the path is, just picking up and and rolling, you know, hitting the road, good. town to town, good. streets, good. bars, whatever, and, uh, good. and letting it take yeah. shape, you know. Yeah. A lot of talent out there. Yeah. Oh, man, um, just appreciate the transparency, man. It, it was super fun. We appreciate you coming in and <laughs> gracing us. Well, we, 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 know, we know you like hiding behind the scenes. We appreciate you <laughs> allowing us to kind of pull you up front today and um, yeah, telling the people, like, <laughs> Where the, where the magic starts and ends, you know. So, no, we appreciate you walking your path for us today. Great meeting you, man, and look forward to hanging again sometime. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess for me, man, I, I appreciate you as a person. You're a good person. Um, it's, it's, it, was, it was spectacular watching <laughs> you perform live in the way that, like, that even with the big D yeah, sauce, that was good. it was, <laughs> that was fun. That was probably the highlight of that my fun. life. Yeah, that that's was like, fun. Man, my opinion is a good hook. Yeah, like, that's, that, was, that was pretty good, man. That so was, I'm not gonna lie. Like that's honestly, out, yeah. I'm not gonna even lie. Like, like there was like <laughs> moments in my life, like obviously, like my kids being born. And, yeah. Stuff like that, and man, then, like getting and married, then your new hook being born. getting married, and then like listening to <laughs> that was. Well, I put that in my top ten. Yeah, that's like, awesome. Yeah. That's good. That's a great. Oh, you tell me that you love me, but I know you only want me 
From, from Big D. <laughs> Yo, if that is not the best thing I've That's ever awesome. heard. That's awesome. So I appreciate That's you to the max. <laughs> yeah. Big right. D. That's awesome. That's good. That's, awesome. <laughs> That's good. Really good, man. Yeah, I appreciate you, Dane, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, fine. man. Anytime. Good time. You're the man. This was a yes, blast. Sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. As always. Thank you so much for the music. That was amazing. Nashville. Out. Out. Oh, Rod around my top now. Window shaking a lot now. I'ma stay proud, no cane brown. But I thank God for these days now. Don't make sounds. Crash glass, no rebounds. End town, Nashville, and I stay proud now. Oh.